This is the second video in our introduction to the project for 170. We're picking up with the web style guide, which was linked to under Phase 1 Resources. The web style guide is a textbook that is available for free online, and it discusses some of the more uh, design-oriented concepts of web development. I'm just going to scroll through and I'm going to highlight a few things as I'm going through this. One is the importance of the wireframe. It discusses this and it shows us how the wireframe really needs to be built before we can start to think about the structure of the page. Let's look at this diagram and get a little bit of the terminology together. We have a logo, a banner, a breadcrumb trail which shows us where we are in the sitemap, links, and our footer. The web style guide also discusses the purpose of this. You know, in real life, there are a lot of individuals involved in developing a website. We have uh, the technical side, which is probably more likely what uh, students in this class are going to go into if you're interested in web development, as opposed to the graphic design side. If I developed a wireframe that was effective and then taken to a client and approved, it allows the technical side, the person that's creating the website, to get started on creating the HTML and corresponding CSS uh, while the individual working on the artistic side already knows where their images are going to go and their particular sizes and they can start working on that graphic side at the same time because in real life the website is really being developed concurrently as opposed to one person uh, developing one item after another in sequence. Although I'm scrolling through a lot of this information, I do uh, encourage you to read it. It does give you a good handle on some of the terminology items that we might want to include in our website. Um, I'm just going to the areas that I think are particularly interesting in terms of pointing out for our web proposal. The web style guide discusses how websites should be built in a way that allows for future expansion, much like buildings allow for future expansion. Here, some of the text is discussing the need to keep usability in mind to make a website easy to use, flexible, for somebody to understand where to click and where to go initially when they come to the site instead of having to hunt around for the, the page. It also gives us a look at a page with and without the images and points out that the page should be able to be navigated by individuals that could not actually see those images. So that might be something you want to start to keep in mind now. Uh, it gives you an idea of different layouts. This one in particular is a little overwhelming. And then now we see an example wireframe diagram. This is an excellent example. Notice it's stripped of color, perhaps stripped of content, and really just brings us to this high level, the way that we're going to interact with the site, the layout of the, the site.
this discussion is about the fact that um, users need to be able to navigate through the page in a way that is uh, logical and that hierarchy or having those multiple levels is very helpful through that. Here's a sequential page where one page links to the next almost as if a story is being told. And here is the same thing where there's a small digression. The hub and spoke has one page that you know, expands out to the others. This is much more common, a hierarchy. This is what I'm uh, anticipating that most of you will likely uh, present. Discusses the placement of tabs and sidebars. And the web style guide also addresses the fact that users don't necessarily jump around your website in the way that you would anticipate that they would. Here we are. This is an important area to look at. Now this I believe is in chapter 4 of the web style guide. If you wanted to go ahead and jump uh, here with the end of chapter 3, beginning of chapter 4 on presenting information, goes through the components that we want to think about for our wireframe diagram. Our logo, we are going to be building a logo in phase 2 and we need to incorporate that in our site. We should have a place for our logo on the wireframe diagram. We should have a header we should decide how many columns we're going to have to our page, and we should have a, a footer on our page. The web style guide discusses layout in terms of white space and how readers' eyes flow through the content. So we can think about uh, where I would likely want to place things. This here is based on a survey where when you go to a website, we don't spend a lot of time looking at the site and trying to decide where we should click to go to individual items. We just sort of know. And we, you know, sort of know these things because of past websites that we've been to. So when users were asked, you know, where do you expect to find the link home? You know, most users where the area is darkest, you know, expect it here. They were also willing to accept it in any of these other places. They certainly didn't see it down here. Where do you expect to see a search feature if that's on the site? Most users are saying up here. Most users say they expect to find banner advertisements here and here. Or navigation, mostly along the left, but they'll also accept them on the top and, and um, third or sidebar, right sidebar. Uh, external links, mostly expecting to see here. Shopping cart, although uh, it's unlikely that any of us would have this feature. It's a little bit more um, involved than the content of the class, but most people are expecting to see that here. Help link, top right corner. About link, most likely in the bottom. So users have certain expectations as far as where they're going to navigate the site. Now, you don't necessarily need to follow these 100% to the rule, but it's something that you should certainly keep in mind because it can be frustrating to a user to come to a website and have it just not work the way other websites that they visit function. This is the, the main part that I wanted to highlight in the web style guide. So at this point, we're going to leave the style guide to the side, um, but it does talk a little bit more, especially in section four, talks a little bit about navigation. You could certainly take a look at that more on your own time because I know that we've been discussing this a lot so far, but I definitely think it's worth going through a little bit further to look at different types of navigation or the breadcrumb trail or path that shows you where you have gotten to in a in a site. So there's definitely some more useful information here, um, but we will leave it right there. So as we're looking at phase one, 
we have our instruction document and we have a template so that we are able to type our answers for phase one into the template directly as opposed to having to retype everything. It's not you know, required that you use the template, but a lot of students do find it to be a, a quicker way to handle the assignment and also an easy way to not forget about some of the required components. We have an example of sitemaps. We have the color scheme designer for helping us to choose our hex color codes. And we also have uh, model answers to the proposal. And this was the only other thing that we hadn't looked at, another wireframe. This one is much more complex, but I just wanted to, to give you a different variation of this. So now we are at a point where we're wondering, how do we draw our wireframe? And there's actually quite a lot of answers to this. I could draw a wireframe diagram in Microsoft Word. I could come back to my template and I could literally start using shapes and text boxes to designate my banner and sidebar and navigation. Personally, I think that this is a very tedious way to do this, and I don't think that this is the most efficient way to draw a wireframe diagram. But if this is what you feel the most familiar with, certainly you could do that. You could also use other tools like Excel, or Microsoft Visio, which is a prototyping tool. I'm going to go back to our Blackboard site and go to the Syllabus Software and Textbooks tab and I'm going to click on... Oops, I thought I had my link... Oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot that I had moved these this semester. I've been trying to move the materials to my own website so we don't have problems when there's a blackboard outage we're trying to get our work done. So let me go ahead and go there. I'm going to click on teaching and go back to 170. And here's where I see software that I can download. There's a trial for Visio, which is a prototyping tool. You could use Visio to draw your wireframe diagram. Another thing that you could use would be pencil. I recommend using pencil. Pencil is probably the easiest way to draw the diagram and it's the most professional way for us to draw our diagram. The example in the instructions that I gave you as well as coincidentally all three of the student samples have used pencil. Pencil was created to do just this, to create a mock-up or diagram for our website and that's why it seems to be the most effective for this. Pencil is not available in the lab. You would have to either download this or use it as an extension on your web browser. So you could go to downloads and you could download it. It's available for Mac uh, as well or you could use it as a web browser extension, although you do have to have that particular, you know, one of these particular versions of Firefox, just to be aware of that. I have downloaded Pencil on here, so I'm going to go ahead and open that and show you how easy it is to use. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened Pencil. Uh, like I said, this is a prototyping tool. It's an open source tool. It's available for free. The downside to Pencil is that you do need to be able to access a computer where you can download this or use it as an extension through your browser. Uh, but the upside is that this is the fastest and most professional way for you to create your wireframe diagrams. And if you're really interested in web development in the future, you likely will be using some sort of prototyping tool which, if it's not pencil, it would certainly be something similar to this. And a lot of these tools function the same way. If you're using Visio, Visio also functions uh, similarly. So let me go ahead and look through some of the available shapes. So instead of as Word, if I'd used Word or Excel, I would have to 
draw all these individually. Uh, with pencil, I can select through some common components. So I might want to even start out just by drawing a frame to my from my web browser. Now some students actually skip this step, but I could start out with that, especially if I want to think about a particular size. You don't need to get too much into the particular sizes for phase one, although it will help you in phase two. Some of those examples, student examples I showed you, the students had spent the time to think about the pixel sizes. Uh, I don't take off for that on phase one, but I do for phase two. So, you know, doing it now could save you time in the future. But let's go ahead and start to include some other components to this. Let's say that maybe I want to use navigation. Maybe I want my navigation to be down the left-hand side. Notice the guidelines available in pencil to help me do this. Now I could decide a little bit about my spacing. Um, this is something that, sorry I forgot to, I meant to use the control button, that I don't, um, I don't hold against you at uh, phase one, but I do with phase two, so I might as well save some time uh, by getting that in mind now. I might want to see something like a breadcrumb trail at the top of my page. Let's see what else I might want to do. Maybe I want to use something like this, or there is actually a box for an image that I could use to represent my logo, to get an idea of the size of my logo. Might want to use a heading. You know, we discussed this when we went back to looking at um, the HTML, those heading levels. I'm looking for my image. I don't seem to find, I don't seem to have that particular one right now. I don't know why I can't find the image. Oh, here we go. So I might know that I want a picture here. This could have also helped out with my logo. Uh, and these will resize for you. Again, one of the, the benefits to using pencil. So let's say that I wanted this to be a particular size. And I could specify that. have my logo here. Maybe I want to... This the alignment guides are very helpful here. Um, I might want to have a banner next to my logo that is also the 75 pixels high, but maybe substantially longer. Let me see, I have, sorry, I just realized what I was using the wrong, wrong box before. I don't use pencil on a regular basis. But this is where you might want to start to think about these sizes and start to think about sizes that sort of round off well because they will make the math easier once we start to talk about the layout. Having numbers that end in zeros and fives and make the math easier is really beneficial. You might want to think about instead of using these navigation buttons I'm just drawing a few different things here so we could see some of the options with pencil. I might have instead decided that I wanted to create tabs for my navigation. So I could have gone ahead and deleted this and instead, you know, move these components down. And created, you know, tab navigation.
And if you were wondering, yes, you can change the, the text on these. If you want to do that with phase one, that is an excellent step. It really gets you towards doing a, a, a great job with phase two and get some of that groundwork done. Uh, we might want to put a form here. Maybe I want to use this as a sidebar. And so I'm really planning on we're going to want a two-column page with the right sidebar for external links and advertisements. And maybe in this area, I'm going to use a form with, oops, excuse me, I didn't mean to, to do that. But maybe I'm going to ask questions. We'll discuss the various field uh, form fields later in the semester. So we get an idea of what is appropriate under what circumstance because there are certain form fields that lend themselves to particular questions. But maybe at the end of this I want to have a submit button. Maybe I wanted the user to be able to enter their name first. You know, I could spend so much time with this. I know we're getting on to having another 20-minute video again. Uh, but I just wanted to show you some of the possibilities that are available with pencil. And I wasn't limited to this. I could have created text areas. I could have done more with my images. I could have uh, put in a table or designated areas for video display. So I do recommend using pencil with this, but I will accept the wireframe in any sort of digital format. If we look at those model answers, we get a good idea of what a finished wireframe diagram would look at it, look like if I had put some, some good time into it. When you're done with pencil, you go to save the document and you'll find that it saves in an extension that you're not familiar with, the EP extension. I'm just going to save this as sample. But you can also go to export, and you can export it as a PNG. And if you export this as a PNG, when you go back to Microsoft Word, you can import the PNG right here. What I did here is I went to Insert, Pictures, and then I picked the PNG file. And there's my wireframe diagram. So obviously I could use the contextual tab to crop the image a little bit or expand the image out. Or I could have selected the items from pencil that I wanted to copy. And I could have chosen export selection instead of exporting the entire page. Uh, but Using Pencil, all I would need to do is either export to a PNG or to save as and save it as, oh, sorry, I thought there was a, could have saved it to PDF. Maybe that was one of the export options. But yeah, export to PDF or the PNG. Either this PDF or PNG uh, would allow us to just use the insert image command on Word and have it come right into our document. So we don't need to worry about uploading multiple files. This is also a good time since we're talking about the video, or start, since we're looking at this, is to point out that the term raster, rasterized graphics are bitmap files. Okay, so let's go ahead and summarize what we're doing for phase one. We're going to the phase one resources tab under the project tab and I'll go ahead and change this so it looks more like yours. We go to the project tab. We can see the overview. can review the grading distribution for the project. But we mostly want to be going into the phase one resources folder. This is where we'll see the instructions that we went over in the first video, the template that we can com complete, the web style guide, which talks to us about layout. We can get a handle on design concepts and appropriate layout. 
an example of drawing a sitemap, as well as an example for a wireframe. We can also go to the Color Scheme Designer to help us pick out the hex color codes for our website. And we can see three past student answers, our website proposals, three excellent submissions from past students to give us an idea of the quality and content that we should be submitting in our project proposal. If you go back to the Schedule tab, you'll see that the proposal is due on February 10th, although you should certainly get started on the proposal. You might have questions that come up, and you know you would certainly have time to, to ask that and make sure that you do really solid work on the proposal because this will be extremely helpful as you proceed through the other phases to have you know significant uh, work done on the proposal. Also, there is one other item to the proposal that involves uploading a file, which we're going to be discussing on February 3rd. So you're going to have that that you need to get done as well in that week before the Phase 1 deadline. So you should certainly try to at least get started on Phase 1 uh, as soon as possible.